So I'm Richard Merigold from, from HomeServe. We're like a, a general insurance company, so we're in the financial services sector. Probably one of the first things that, that I always like to point out is I'm not a lawyer. I'm not legally trained. I never have been, but I have been doing this job for nearly 10 years. Um, long before data protection was a thing, long before there was a hashtag GDPR, um, and long before anybody ran daily long courses um, every day of the week, 365 days of the year. Um, for me, very simply, the GDPR is an elephant. And I will explain why I think it's an elephant. So the GDPR is the largest piece of privacy regulation in, in a generation. I don't think there's ever been anything as bigger or as wide or as vast or as complicated. <coughs> and the reason that I say it's like an elephant is because you can't eat an elephant whole. It's too big. We can't do it. I've seen man versus food. I've seen him eat a big steak. Never seen him eat an elephant. So the only way that you can eat an elephant is if you break it down into its component parts and then start snacking away and, and taking little bites and little pieces. And for me, the GDPR is exactly the same as that process. So how many of you have, have read the GDPR? I won't tell anyone. Okay, so a few of you. So the rest of you, I imagine, have some kind of basic understanding of what's required, or you've seen some guidance, or your boss went, John, I've got a job for you, mate. <laughs> so the GDPR is 189 pages of text, 99 articles, 80-odd recitals. Um, it flips and it comes back and it crosses over and it talks about other things and it relates back to itself and then it runs off somewhere else. So the body of, of the elephant, for me, is, is all of those things in one place. So you have to take all of those things and you have to batch them up and you have to try and work out where those things cross over, where those things relate to each other, and then turn them into much smaller bite-sized pieces. So rather than having loads of bite-sized pieces, make yourself some little, little dinner plates of information. Usually I've got a slide that shows this really well, so if I'm just waving my hands it's because I'm used to pointing at things on a slide. Um, so for us it was split down into um, eight different what we call work streams. And those work streams were turned into work packs, and those work packs were provided to people within the business that understand how these changes have to be implemented in their area of the business. And the reason we did that is because I don't work in their area of the business. So I don't know how they need to implement these things. I can stand here and say, well, you need to do this, and I've written a policy, and you need to implement this. And they turn around and go, Richard, that doesn't work. And I go, well, I don't care. I've written a policy. You have to do it. But if I give it to them and say, this is what I want you to do, can you tell me how you're going to do it? And they go, well, this is how we do these things. So we could change this, and we could change this, and we could change this. So it makes it a lot easier for people to digest. It makes it easier for people to manage. So that's my first tip. If you haven't done it already, Try and work out what's important. Try and look at the pieces of the regulation that you think are important or may affect your business. Prioritise those. Turn them into, into work packs. Understand those parts of it. Don't try and understand the whole thing. Understand the things that matter to your organisation. This is where we get on to what I like to call the, the legs of the elephant. So for me, the legs are the enabler because the, the legs allow, allow the elephant to walk. They allow your business to, to move on and keep operating and, and make money and keep you in a job and keep your shareholders happy and your bosses happy and all these sorts of good things. So you need to work out what's the enabler for your business. Steve and Laszlo have already talked today about finding things, ways to make this not just about compliance, make it about something else. And this is what you need to make it about. You need to make it about the enabler for your organisation. Lazo talked about the customer, make it customer focused. Where's the benefits that you can get from the GDPR that you can give to your boss? You can go, if we do this, we're going to get more customers. Our customers are going to be happier. They're going to like us more. They're going to trust us. And if they trust us, they're going to buy something else. And after they've been here for three, four, five, six years, they're unlikely to go anywhere else. I've banked with the same company for the last 10 or 15 years, mainly because my company that the bank I was with when I was a student didn't treat me very fairly and wasn't nice to me, so I left. I know friends at a university that have stayed with their banks from university for their in, entire lives. So that's important. So find out what's important to your business and use that as your enabler. For my organisation, the customer is incredibly important. Steve already talked about putting the, the customer at the heart of everything you do. That used to be our, our little strap line because the customer is incredibly important to us. We don't really start making any um, 
money from our customers until they've been a customer for a few years. We spend a lot of money in, in acquiring them and showing them what we can do and allowing them to make claims and going out fixing their property so they'll see the benefits of our products so then they'll want to stay. Because we're an insurer. You don't know you need us until something's gone wrong. So we have to convince you before that point that we're worth having. So that's what my enabler is. That's what we use in our organisation as a neighbour. We sell that customer promise. We sell that idea that if we have better data, if we're clearer, more transparent, more honest with our customers, tell them why we want their information, use it fairly, get their consent, listen to them when they say, I don't want you to market to me anymore, then we stop marketing to them. Listen to the people that do want to hear from us, but talk to them in the channels that they want to hear from us in. If somebody doesn't want you to text them, don't bloody text them, because they don't want it. If they want it by email, don't send them post. Talk to people in the way that they want to be talked to, and then you'll probably find that you get a much better response. Now, the third part of the elephant, for me, now this is a little bit loose, so you're going to have to forgive me for this bit, is the trunk. Now, I like to use the trunk, because for me, the trunk is an incredibly important tool for the elephant. So elephants don't have any hands, they haven't got any fingers, any opposable thumbs, but they have got a trunk. With their trunk, they can scare other animals away. They can signal to, uh, to their herd. They can drink. They can eat. They can move things. They can pick things up. They can nurse their children. The trunk is the most important tool that the elephant has in its arsenal. Apart from maybe its tusks, but we're not, we're not going to argue about that today. The most important tool that you've got is in this room today. You've got a regulator that wants to educate you a regulator that provides free services, free stuff, stuff you don't have to pay for, conferences, seminars, documentation, guidance, audit checklists, work packs, scenarios. All of these things are available from the ICO website, and they're all free. They're all ready to go. You've got people like myself. You've got people like Laszlo. You've got people like Simon and his organisation. You know, we will talk to you. We want to help you. I like this. For me, this is really bloody exciting. I, well, I, you know, this is good fun for me. It's sad, really. But, <laughs> but it, it's good. I like talking about it. I like understanding people's challenges. I like trying to, to help people. Everybody's in the same boat. It's a very rare situation where organisations aren't actually trying to compete because you're not there isn't anything to compete for you all have to do this and you all have to do it in a similar way but it's about doing it what's the best way for your organisation Steve already said a lot of this stuff isn't actually new a lot of this stuff has existed for a number of years it's just been evolved it's been changed it's been made a bit better but it still exists if you look at Spain, if you look at Germany, they're already doing this stuff. And they've been doing this stuff for 10 years. They produce guidance and documentation and information, and they produce it in English. If you go on their website, you can change their website into English. So there's a wealth of information, and again, that's free. For larger organisations, don't get me wrong, you probably are going to need to look at external consultants or look at support or look at getting a DPO, and you have no choice in that. But there's information out there that can allow you to determine whether or not you need to do that. So use those tools. Use that information that's available to you. Avoid the, the, the snake oil salesmen, I think they call them on LinkedIn. You know, these people that tell you that you have to get consent for everything, or as long as you encrypt your data, everything's safe, you've passed GDPR. It's lies. It doesn't work like that. There is no single piece of software in this world that will make you GDPR compliant. It doesn't exist. GDPR isn't a technological solution. GDPR is a cultural issue. It's something you have to embed in your organisation. You need to train your people. You need to teach them why it's important. Then you need to get them to live it. A piece of software isn't going to do that for you. You need to do that for yourselves. And that's probably one of the most important things for me. This is about people. And if they're not getting it, Tell them that when they're not at work and they're arguing with their bank because their bank's lost all of their personal records or the doctor's lost the file of their 
pregnant wife who's got diabetes and now nosy Norris from next door knows. Relate it back to that. Just because you're at work doesn't mean that it's not important. This is important outside of their lives. And once you get people thinking like that, then people start to treat people's information in the way that they would expect theirs to be treated. And then you might start to get some, to get some synergy and to get some traction. Now, the only other thing that I want to say, and Steve may shoot me for this, but I'm going to give it a go. I see a lot of articles, a lot of information. I see a lot of, a lot of countdowns like it's Christmas, you know, 255 days to the GDPR. The deadline is coming. Doomsday is appearing. <laughs> The 25th of May is incredibly important. But it isn't the end. It's not get to the 25th of May, hooray, we're all done, it's a Saturday now, we can just get drunk and forget about it. The 25th of May is, is just the day when, when Steve and Elizabeth can come and knock on your door and say, hey, now I can find you incredible amounts of money, but I'm not going to because that's not what we're here for. The 25th of May is the beginning of the next... 20 years of, of data protection and privacy and information rights and, and people's rights and getting to know people and getting to know your customers. So it's not the beginning. You're not aiming to be compliant by the 25th of May. Your budget doesn't need to end on the 25th of May. Your budget needs to start on the 25th of May. Your work needs to start on the 25th of May and then you need to carry it on for the next 20 years. And for me, that's the most important thing. I think people forget that. So when you leave here today and somebody says, as long as you're compliant by the 25th of May, tell them they're wrong. Tell them you have to remain compliant after the 25th of May. And for me, that's the most important thing. Thank you very much.